some sense, agent-based modeling is really all about uh, the atomic units in this particular context. So there is a merger even at this point, and then other sorts of models in that sense. We're drilling down even further. Then there are detailed definitions uh, in this sense. Obviously, models of persons who, for purposes of art, fashion, advertising, etc., uh, mathematics models, and so on and so forth. Um, okay, and there is the Wikipedia entry for, uh, uh, for the term model, which again gives this great variety of possibilities in that sense. Now, back um, 40 years ago, uh, in 1965, when models were first uh, developed in city planning, um, I should probably say that really almost as soon as computers came out of the scientific laboratories after the end of the Second World War in the United States, in Britain and in Germany, all of which had been developed, in fact, during the Second World War. That was really, to some extent, the impetus for the development of uh, these large numerical sort of monsters, the mainframe machines, for example, the Manhattan Project, the bomb, uh, and the V-bomb, etc., in uh, Germany. Uh, all, of these, um, all of these projects have led to the development of computing. Almost as soon as computers came out of the lab, people began to apply them to uh, scientific uh, aspects which were non scientific in the classical sense. So, for example, in the 1950s, IBM uh, began to develop transactions processing in business in that sense. Uh, and if you go back to those days, you see the beginnings of municipal information systems prior to GIS, etc. But really, by the early 60s, we had the development of the first rudimentary land use and transport models. And it, it's not really surprising that uh, um, in, those in those particular years, there were attempts to see the context of model uh, in the context of planning in that sense. Now, one of the great papers, I should say that um, in 1965, the Journal of the American Institute of Planners uh, actually had a special issue on urban development models edited by Britt Harris. And Ira Lowry wrote a particularly interesting, uh, uh, interesting short course in model design that told the world, etc., what these elements of models were. It's a good paper because in some senses, you key it, if you key it into Google, it will come up in lots of places, most papers these days that uh, are noteworthy are somewhere on the web, basically, in that sense. But it's reprinted in the book by Berry and Marble, Spatial Analysis, etc., which is in the late 60s. But let me say a couple of things about what Larry said in this paper. First of all, he talked about models being for certain sorts of functions. He said that um, there, there, there are really three main functions we can... Uh, use models for. One is descriptive or representational, which gives insights. This is really understanding in the classic scientific sense. Uh, the second and related aspect uh, is the idea that once we build a good understanding uh, in certain sorts of models, in fact in, in the majority of models probably, uh, they enable us to make predictions. Because normally uh, in building a good representational um, understanding in this particular context, uh, then that leads us to actually find out whether the model is good or bad with respect to the representation that we're trying to match it to. In other words, the idea of validating or calibrating the model is central to seeing whether or not we have a good understanding. Uh, then if, uh, once one gets to that stage, the idea of using it for a prediction uh, in the forecasting sense is really um, almost inevitable in that sense. But added to this, he said, in our field, we're interested in design, we're interested in using models to actually enable us to prescribe or design in that sense, models which are capable of optimization. So these are the, the three categories that really develop the field. Now in fact, 40 years on, the prescriptive or design model uh, in terms of optimization has really fallen out of favor massively, largely because the kind of, sy the kind of systems that we're involved in the kind of uh, urban planning uh, and policy systems we're involved in are widely regarded as far too complex uh, so that optimization models can be applied per se. The idea of building a model and then optimizing it in some sense is really only a tiny fraction of what goes on in the idea of uh, urban planning and design in that sense. So to some extent, optimization models have dropped off the agenda in that sense, even predictive models um, are really no longer used for forecasting per se. Um, we all know that uh, um, we all know that uh, forecasting um, or, or prediction after Karl Popper, etc., is impossible. We can't really know the future in that sense. Uh, and if you need any uh, evidence of that, we only need to look at uh, what's been happening in terms of European uh, 
finance over the last uh, six weeks or so that nobody ever would have expected a second credit crunch. Uh, nobody ever even believed that banks were so uh, so much indebted in a sense to, to each other and uh, uh, to nation states and so on, in that sense that in some sense it was very unexpected, almost impossible to predict in that sense. Easy to predict, of course, in hindsight, but uh, impossible to predict. Um, very little of the commentary in the last two or three years has been uh, related to what's happening at the present time. So even prediction uh, is used rather differently from this initial characterization which Barry had. There are three other things which are very important to this talk, uh, and that is different types of models. Larry really defined three types of models. He first of all defined iconic models. These are very near to the system of interest. The best example uh, is the idea of a uh, an architect's model in that sense. It's a simplified, simplifying the superficial content of the system so that we can communicate ideas. I mean, clearly an architect's model is particularly interesting in this context because clearly a city model composed of buildings, if you put a new building in, uh, then we can use our uh, ordinary senses to see what the impact of that building will be. So iconic models really go back. They're toys in this particular context. Uh, all models in a sense are toys, but the iconic models are more like toys that we play with as children uh, than those that uh, we uh, perhaps play with as adults. Uh, analog models are abstractions that are mirrored in some kind of analogy. This is the second stage of modeling, quite widely used in a scientific context. So, for example, the wind tunnel uh, is an excellent example. Uh, the idea of blood flowing, for example, uh, where we're using a media which is somewhat different. We're using a um, a dynamic media, a uh, flow media which is different from blood itself in that sense, uh, to, to make the abstraction. This is an analog model in that sense. And, 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 and last but not least, and in some sense this was what Larry was aiming at, there are symbolic models, models that abstract the world into a set of symbols that can be manipulated uh, for prediction. The previous <coughs> two models, but the predictive concept is relatively weak in a sense, but the symbolic models, you have the powerful notion that you can actually uh, manipulate the symbols um, and, and produce um, uh, uh, numerical predictions in that sense. Uh, okay, here, here's an example of the convergence. One of the, one of the key features that has happened over the last 40 years is that all of these different modeling styles are beginning to converge. And I'll show you some examples of this in a moment. Um, here's a little cartoon which, uh, now if we were drawing this cartoon today, I picked it off the web about four years ago and it probably relates to probably drawn about 10 years ago, you can see that the, this is the catwalk with the, with the models on, uh, and these are different machines, but of course they're, they're machines that have long gone. They would be handheld, there would be an iPhone, um, and a Blackberry, and a Samsung, etc. at this particular point. But you get the idea, this notion of convergence of different styles of abstraction in this particular way. Now, let, before I proceed, let me throw out some examples of models of these styles. Now, iconic models, uh, in our field are essentially architect models. Now here are some large scale ones for London. Now the, imp the implication might be that iconic has really fallen off the edge of the earth in that sense. That's not true at all. These are essentially very useful models to gather stakeholders. Uh, these are actually in the city of London marketing suite, uh, which is in the square mile in London. And you can see the Thames and you can see the, the extent of the Thames. And they're used as dialogue for stakeholders in that sense. So, um, that there are many people who would argue still that if you talk to them about models in planning, they would think of these sorts of things. And of course, what the point I'm making here is that um, uh, these are still very significant. Um, of course, we can, um, of course, we can um, build them geometrically now. Uh, but even building them geometrically as CAD models, and I'll show you some examples of that in a moment. Uh, then clearly, these models. Um, uh, the, the, these traditional iconic models are still very much on the agenda. So, to some extent, the digital world is not uh, substituting for the material world in that sense. It's complementing it in some sense. Um, here's an example of analog models. These are some excellent uh, visualizations of uh, fluid flow, which is done, done by um, uh, somebody whose name is escaping. I should have looked this up. There's, uh, this chap has a, a website, uh, which is, uh, this is Lisbon, of course. Uh, and traffic flow, and the idea is that the representation is flowing blood, so if you click on this, you can actually see the flow uh, during the working day, which is very effective in some sense, 
to actually visualize in that sense. That, to some extent, is an analog model. It actually, it's, it's a trick. It's not really an analog model. It's a, it's a digital model, a computer model, in a sense, uh, of this, of course. But were we to use different media uh, and to think of blood flowing in the city in this sense, and because that's not a, a far-fetched idea, the idea of the arterial road or the artery, the heart of the city, Victor Gruen wrote, wrote a book in the 60s called The Heart of the City, this is really all about this notion of the analog in some sense, that we think of cities as being analogs to biological systems and so on. Uh, so this is again a good example of uh, a really a contemporary